Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Boss Coin YouTube channel. Today we're not going to be talking about this farmer's tan I have. But to be clear, that's because I'm a crypto miner, so maybe it's obligatory that I have a farmer's tan. Today we're going to be talking about proof of stake, proof of work, which is kind of like crypto mining and other blockchain consensus protocols. Basically how a blockchain and cryptocurrency work and run. Proof of stake has been and will continue to replace proof of work. How many cryptocurrency projects have phased out proof of work and moved to proof of stake and then compare that to vice versa? How many new top 100 cryptocurrencies appear that are proof of work as opposed to proof of stake? So without further ado, let's run 10 seconds of tales, the beautiful Shiba Inu Dogecoin and the Bosscoin intro. In proof of work, you're adding each block to a chain. Miners compete to solve a difficult puzzle using their computer's processing power. In proof of stake, there's no competition as the block creator is chosen by an algorithm based on the user's stake or mainly like their cryptocurrency holdings. And traditionally, the more coins you have, the bigger stake you have, so the more likely you are to be rewarded uh, for doing that. In order to add a malicious block, you'd have to have a computer with more than 51% um, of the network hash rate on proof of work for example the bitcoin network hash rate to basically add malicious blocks you have to do that for a while you have to maintain the longest change and you'd have to essentially do what's called double spend attack where basically you spend coins on your bad chain and then it reverts and then you still have those coins in the main chain but you basically fraud it out in exchange because it basically gives you the opportunity to sell coins twice which uh, obviously that's instantly doubling your money or more. In order to add a malicious block, you'd have to own 51% of all the cryptocurrency on the network for proof of stake to maliciously attack it. Generally speaking, there's a, there's a lot of different implementations of proof of stake and it's not that simple. And there also are some uh, proof of work networks that are not as simply 51% attacked as well. But it's not just owning 51% of the coins on that network. You just need to own or have control of 51% of the staking coins. Okay, however, that is determined. Moving back to proof of work, the first miner to solve the puzzle is given a reward. Almost everybody mines on mining pools now, so it just kind of goes to the mining pool. And if you're on the right mining pool, normally you get paid unless they're using a different payout scheme, which is a deeper dive than we need to go into today. In proof of stakes, depending on the network, sometimes you are rewarded for basically making the block and or you are getting the transaction fee. Some networks give you a block reward, some networks give you a block reward and the transaction fee, some give you none, some give you one or the other. Bitcoin uses the Hashcash proof of work system. So let's look at that real briefly. Fun fact, in the Bitcoin white paper, mining doesn't even appear, like that term does not appear only result it gets is within determining determining okay I, I get it all right maybe that was a bit of a reach action of doing this proof of work is mining it's using originally cpus the little uh, computer chips in most computers or all computers and then it moved to graphics cards and fpgas these are advanced devices that are much more powerful than a cpu for certain tasks and they're very flexible. And then came ASIC miners, application specific integrated circuit miners. Basically they're these big hungry or power hungry devices that only do one thing. For example, the SHA-256 algorithm for running the Bitcoin blockchain. And it's things like that that led people to want to create an alternative. You may be familiar with Sonny King. He basically was the first one to bring proof of stake to light. Since then, he has come back numerous times with other projects and stuff like that. But we're not gonna focus on all that stuff. We're just gonna focus briefly on PPC coin, or PPC, PP coin, which I mean, that's, you gotta, he should have said that aloud before he kind of released that. Let's see if this site's even still up. This is an old post off of Bitcoin Talk from 2012. I'm surprised that this site is still up. Uh, it's referencing Prime Coin. I wasn't in cryptocurrency at this time, but I know that it at least ended up as Pure Coin, which was the pioneer of proof of stake. I love their green color. It's like our logo color. Anyway, the point here is that it's supposed to be long-term energy non-dependent. Basically, they were looking to remove 
the mining aspect, the proof of work aspect, and how this is energy dependent, and how it has you know specific hardware associated with it, and so forth. But the biggest takeaway of all of this is that by removing that, it was incredibly easier to deploy, and now you don't have like people needing to mine it, and it kind of centralizes it to a degree, especially back in the day when cryptocurrency was not nearly as distributed and well known and participated in as it is now. I would like to thank today's video sponsor, Crypto.com. We have a write-up on Voscoin Talk, the best cryptocurrency forum in the world, where you can learn how easy it is to get the $50 for free. Uh, it's a sign-up bonus here to complete the terms. And uh, honestly, you know, we've really been enjoying uh, Crypto.com. And it's not uh, technically staking, but we're earning passive income in it. Basically, through an extension, it's sort of like DeFi, decentralized finance, with a Simply put, we are using the earn section of their app, which kind of gets you involved with the lending on their platform. And they are basically lending your coins along with other things. For example, you can see right here, we're staking Cardano and Ethereum among numerous other coins on their app. And you can see every week on that 10,000 Cardano, I'm earning over 11 coins. Or on Ethereum, with just four Ethereum deposited, I'm earning 0.0038 Ethereum per week. And you can say whatever you want, but that's a lot more Ethereum than you're earning if you're doing nothing with it, because that would be zero until Ethereum 2.0 gets here. It's really easy to get to speed stake in this stuff. One of the main questions we've received recently about crypto.com and crypto earn is how can you afford, basically this question, how can you afford to pay the rates you're paying? These rates are not just higher than any traditional finance, they're higher than anything in crypto. So basically the best uh, kind of like lending rates right now are from this app, which is well one of the main reasons we're using it. And from this, they're, they're paying great rates because they're looking at their average cost of capital. They're essentially finding the balance between the most that they can pay on the earn side and then also comparing that with what they're earn or able to earn on the credit side and obviously they're not in business to lose money so even the interest rate they're giving you it is uh, less than they're making in total and they think that this will be the most powerful revenue driver for them next year aside from just straight cryptocurrency trading so let's quickly look at some of the top 100 cryptocurrencies when ranked by coin market cap and this will really get the point across pretty quickly i think for you guys so we have bitcoin proof of work we have ethereum proof of work but 100 percent determined to move to proof of stake they've been saying that for years still waiting but we'll cover that a bit more here in a second and you know i want to make one quick note if it's not proof of work i'm pretty much just going to say it's proof of stake or an alternative consensus protocol doesn't mean that you have the opportunity to earn passive income with that project but it is a possibility basically we have proof of work and not proof of work. So Tether is obviously not proof of work. XRP Ripple is not proof of work. Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV are proof of work because they're clones of Bitcoin or forks of Bitcoin and they're really trying to maintain that Bitcoin vibe and branding and so forth. Litecoin was kind of like the test net for a while or the silver to Bitcoin's gold is how they like to market it uh, to Bitcoin. So obviously that was also going to be proof of work. Binance from an ICO to moving to their own chain. Uh, yeah, that's not proof of work. Crypto.com coin. Oh, we talked about them earlier. Not proof of work. EOS. Not proof of work. Cardano. Not proof of work. Tezos. Not proof of work. Chainlink. Not proof of work. Stellar. Not proof of work. Unos said Leo. Or really just what everyone calls Leo. Not proof of work. Monero. Actually proof of work. Tron. Uh, I mean, kind of, but I would not really, I wouldn't really classify Tron as proof of work. I'd say not proof of work in my opinion for the most part. USD coin, obviously, not proof of work. Huobi token, not proof of work. NEO, not proof of work. Ethereum Classic, actually proof of work. Dash, a mixture of proof of work and proof of stake through their masternode system. It's technically not proof of stake, it's having masternodes, but it's essentially the same function where people have a very large stake, 1,000 Dash coins, and they get essentially half of the block reward and the other half goes to miners. IOTA, not proof of work. Compound, just busted into the top 25 of cryptocurrencies and ranked by coin market cap because how much they have locked up in their new DeFi system. Yeah, uh, once again, you know, a massive big new player not proof of work cosmos not proof of work zcash proof of work but disappointing to say the least yeah v chain yep not proof of work maker not proof of work hedge trade not proof of work ontology not proof of work i could keep going but as you can see most cryptocurrency projects are not proof of work for better and worse and whether you like it or not the money is not going to new proof of work cryptocurrency projects. It's going to staking projects 
or using some other kind of consensus protocol. Bitcoin especially in their proof of work mining algorithm has received a lot of negative attention just because Bitcoin is so important and powerful that it uses a lot of power and its market cap, the coin price kind of dictates that. The more valuable it is, the more miners you can have on the network and thus the more uh, power that you can, that the network can basically consume and still be profitable for people to mine on. For example, just taking this chart, so take it with a grain of salt, but based off this chart is that the Bitcoin network nearly uses the same amount of electricity as the Czech Republic. But before you get too down, on like, oh wow, like proof of work uses so much energy, it's not sustainable. You know, they've done the research. This does, this pales in comparison to the energy consumed by say, credit card companies like Visa. They consume more power to based off the research I've read than the entire Bitcoin network combined by a lot. If you wanna decentralize the world and unbank people and they become their own banks, well, there's probably gonna be some kind of price to pay. Like at a minimum, at least some of the electric bill. One of the things people are worried about is how proof of stake is going to in impact DeFi, decentralized finance, the hottest term in crypto right now. ETH 2.0 will change the dynamics of DeFi. In one way, we might see less congestion with transactions in DeFi and potentially the staking model might reduce the costs of transactions. Main thing about sharding is that it should not break the DeFi composability according to Mr. Vitalik Buterin. Staking and lending aren't mutually exclu exclusive actions. In the short term, I'd expect some value that would otherwise have gone into lending and DeFi dApps to go into staking, but most of the value going to staking will come from large-scale crypto operators to secure ETH 2.0. These va value flows would ha never have gone into DeFi. I guess that that will be exciting to see if how dApp developers like to combine ETH 2.0 staking mechanics within DeFi dApps for the smaller retail users. So one of the main ways they're going to do this, I've already seen it happening, is they're going to basically make it so you don't have to have you know 32 Ethereum to participate in staking. They're gonna give you the opportunity to stake less or do kind of like merge staking and pooled staking with them. So you could say only have one Ethereum, two Ethereum, five Ethereum, and you could participate in staking as opposed to owning 32, which right now is about $7,000. Any way you slice it, proof of stake is not going away. And uh, you know, I think that's for better and worse. It's very interesting. I'm all about earning passive income and having your money work for you in any way that it can. So with proof of stake and kind of this, all the whole DeFi realm giving us new opportunities to participate in that, I'm all about it. But I don't want that to take away from mining that I think is an excellent opportunity to earn passive income in its own right. All of this is still really new and emerging. And if you're watching this video right now, you're still part of the early wave of cryptocurrency. Everybody wants to be like a crypto OG and have bought Bitcoin for like $2, $5, $100, even $1,000, whatever. Uh, but those days have passed. However, you can still be on the forefront of kind of like the next waves of, you know, big new things in cryptocurrency and blockchain, like proof of stake with a seriously big wide scale implementation. Like it, when Ethereum does this, whenever that day comes, it's gonna be a pretty big freaking deal. And the new opportunities that DeFi is opening was honestly really cool. And all these lending apps and, you know, earn this and stake that and whatever. These are all very new opportunities that all have their own potentially, uh, you know, small or big inherent risks. But so does everything in cryptocurrency and really in life. So you got to just kind of weigh, you know, is this worth it and to what extent and with that, what are you willing to risk? I'm really interested to see where all this goes. I don't think proof of stake's going away. I showed you the coin market cap. I mean, it's not proof of work, not proof of work, not proof of work, not proof of work like everywhere, which is as a you know big crypto miner, sad to see. But at the end of the day, where the money is going is definitely something I cannot simply ignore. Simply put, it's something that I can't afford to ignore, quite literally. It's something that you very likely cannot afford to ignore. So I hope you decide to stick around the Voscoin YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up on the video, leave a comment. We can explore all this together and uh, just try to make the best of it and be on the next big wave of cryptocurrency and hopefully a really big impending uh, um, bull run. So as always, appreciate you. I'll see you on the next one.